Well, good evening, everybody. And it's wonderful to see so many of you here tonight at that magnificent MCG. I want to say thank you for being here to represent all Australians affected by breast cancer, including the 15,000 who will be women who will be diagnosed this year and the 125 men just this year. Also, thank you for being here to represent the 2,700 women who we will lose to breast cancer this year. I know tonight there are people from down the road and from every corner of Australia, and that's because breast cancer affects so many Australians. It is the most common cancer affecting Australian women and a disease that affects millions of women around the world. So tonight, we, together we stand to acknowledge the significant number of people affected, but also to support each other. The power of the pink lady symbol is that it is both one woman and many women and their families affected within it. And as the founder of BCNA, Lynn Swinburne said, the pink lady is nobody and yet she is everybody. Thousands of mothers, daughters, sisters, aunties, friends and partners affected. Everyone here tonight, everyone in the crowd has a unique and different experience and story. And many of you I know were here in 2010 and I was here in 2010 standing on the ground with my girlfriend Pat who'd been diagnosed five years before. We were just two faces in the crowd. And of course, I never thought that night that um, I would be diagnosed with breast cancer myself the following year. And in fact, since we last had the field in 2010, 58,000 women have been diagnosed with breast cancer. So on the ground tonight, I know there are women here who are going through the challenge of treatment right now. There are those who finished active treatment but are still taking medication, sometimes for five to 10 years. And I know that many have found new meaning and purpose and joy in life. And there are those amongst us that many of us know who are living with secondary breast cancer, which is an incurable spread of the disease. And finally, those that are here are remembering someone that, that you have loved. And all of you who are standing here supporting us, we thank you for the strength that you provide to all of us. I'd like to ask those who've been diagnosed with breast cancer to raise their hand. Thank you. We all have a shared experience of breast cancer and you're, you might be standing next to someone that you've never met before, but who knows what you're going through and knows the tears that you have shed. And we know that so much can be achieved with the support of others. And that's why BCNA is here to support you. And we will continue to work hard to support Australians affected by breast cancer with information that is so vital after a cancer diagnosis. And the support and resources that are provided by the wonderful breast care nurses and health professionals, many of whom I know are here tonight too. And we will continue our advocacy efforts on your behalf, making sure that your voices are heard by representing our 90,000 members. And just think of that, 90,000 of us would feel would be the equivalent of the grand final here, the MCG. For those who can't be here, we're standing here for you. And we're standing for the women who were diagnosed this week and who are gonna be diagnosed next week. Now I'm going to introduce to you three women who are gonna speak for the many of you here tonight, Sharon, Sharon and Megan. And first of all, we're going to hear from Sharon, who has travelled from Townsville to be with us tonight. My name is Sharon, and this year I celebrate nine years of thriving. In 2005, at the age of 40, with two young boys aged nine and five, I discovered a lump in each breast whilst showering. This one moment changed the course of our lives forever. Most of the audience here tonight know firsthand what a diagnosis of a life-threatening disease does to your world, 
turns it upside down. My first thought was, will I survive to watch my boys grow up? But no one can provide those guarantees, even when you're healthy. Gratefully, I am still here, and BCNA played a big part in why this is so. Back in 2005, my oncologist prescribed Herceptin, a targeted thera therapy. However, at that time, Herceptin was only available to women diagnosed with secondary be breast cancer on the PBS. At a price of $60,000 for 12 months treatment for women with early breast cancer, this wonder drug didn't come cheap. Women and their families all over Australia were mortgaging their homes and fundraising to be able to pay for her septum. Their heartbreaking stories were all across the media. And sadly for many, it was just unaffordable. I am so grateful to BCNA because of our combined voices in 2006. This drug became available for all women, free of charge. I stand here not only as a survivor, but as a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother, a friend, and a wearer of so many other hats. proud to be asked to share with you my journey so far. I also stand here as a peer support volunteer trained by Cancer Council Queensland and a BCNA trained community liaison and consumer representative, knowing the strength and empowerment that shared experiences provide to others who are travelling this same road. My greatest joy has been to see the hope return in the eyes of the women that I sit with on their first day of treatment. Thank you. My name is Sharon, and I am 47 years young. Sometimes I find it extremely difficult to explain my situation, especially to family and friends who have already seen me deal with the unwelcome tenant, breast cancer, back in 2004. We thought it had been beaten, but it returned in 2012, and I am now living with advanced breast cancer. Squatters, who are even more unwelcome. I stand here today for myself, for my family, and for everyone who hears those four little words, you have breast cancer. But most of all, I stand for those who then hear the words, we cannot cure you. I've put my thoughts into a poem and I would like to share with you. It is called Cancer, You Will Not Defeat Me. I am surrounded by many, supported by some, and yet stand alone before it. A path for me and me alone. How it hurts as I walk down this path, seeing others hurt as they watch me travelling. Not all can see it, but it is there, lurking and hiding in the shadows, just waiting for its chance to continue to grow and to take over. My battle against it is relentless and it rages all the time. Not loud, not angry, but a calm and determined battle it is indeed. Anger will not be wasted on it, as that will only make it stronger. I am at one with it, and in some ways, am weaker because of it. Yet I am stronger now than ever before, because I have changed and continue to change. I have grown and am still growing. I have learned and keep on learning. I will not give up 
I do not know how to. It will never get my heart. It will never get my soul. My every waking moment has something to do with it, but it is just a word, just a name, and it does not define me. I'm living with it, and it will not defeat me. Thank you. I am Megan Maledek. In 2010, I stood with my beautiful mum, Barbara Oakes, on the MCG, forming the Pink Lady, as you have all done here tonight. Mum was first di diagnosed in 1989, when I was 11 years old. She was subsequently diagnosed with advanced cancer in 2004. Despite her diagnosis, she lived a full life, studying, working for many community organisations, travelling overseas and enjoying the finer things in life. She had a cracking sense of humour and it was the laughter that made a big difference to the harder times. Eight weeks ago, my mum passed away. Two days ago, my dad passed away. I'm standing here today to honour my mum's memory. And because in seven weeks, her first grandchild, a baby pink lady, will be born. While the prospect of becoming a mum for the first time without my parents, especially my mum, is profoundly heartbreaking, I've got 36 years of training from the best. So to all the people who have survived breast cancer, those who are surviving each day as it comes, and those who have passed, we honour you, your bravery, and on behalf of all the pink ladies, the daughters, young and old, thank you for your strength and your inspiration. I'd ask tomorrow, please give your mums a hug from me. Now to pay tribute to the lives we have lost, we'll join together in a moment's silence. They have all lived a courageous life they will not be forgotten in this place and will remain in our hearts forever. <laughs> 